Hello everyone, my name is Beth and welcome to my floss tube channel. All right, we are here today uh, to talk about some cross stitch and I actually have a lot to show you today so I'm very excited. We're gonna start first with uh, the new things that I have learned in the past two weeks and it's not really brand new but it's something that I've been really working hard on uh, to practice this past two weeks and that is two-handed stitching. Now, I've had a stand since like May or June, um, and I've been working on stitching two-handedly with it since I got it. Uh, it's not a Lowry stand, it's a Needlework System 4 or something. I'm sure I've said that wrong. Um, but that's the stand that I have. It's a lap stand. Um, and if anyone would like me to talk about my stand or show it in the future, I will definitely do that. But so I have been working on two-handed stitching on primarily my big projects. That's what I usually stitch in my stand. And I'm not very good at it yet. Um, I'm just not very coordinated, especially with my left hand because I'm right-handed. Uh, but that's to be expected and I'm working on it and I'm definitely getting faster. So it's something that I want to keep working on because I really like it. It's not something that I'll do for every piece, but it's definitely a great skill to have in my back pocket. So I'm going to keep on working on that. Also this week, um, I did something really cool. Uh, I finished my first ever 5k. So I have been training, training, working on, um, running for a 5k that I'm signed up for next week. And I had never finished like the complete 5k in one go before. And I did that in, in practice the other day. So I'm really excited about that and feeling much better about the actual race and really looking forward to it. And it's a Harry Potter themed race. So the perfect first one for me. <laughs> so wish me luck on that. I'm really nervous, but I'm sure I'll make it through. <laughs> Even if I have to walk more than I would like. I'll definitely walk some, but you know, progress. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, also, I worked on a shockingly large number of projects in the last two weeks. It's been kind of a hectic couple of weeks, a lot of kind of tough things going on in my life right now. And I was expecting when I was planning this episode to come up with not very much to show you. Turns out I stitched on all of my projects except for three. Uh, I didn't stitch on my Autumn Quakers. I didn't stitch on my Barn Owl and I didn't stitch on my butterflies. And everything else got love from me this week. So, or the last two weeks. So that's really cool. I even got a new start in, um, which I haven't decided. I may show you. Uh, it's one of the ones that I showed last week for my planned Christmas gifts. And it was actually a start and a finish this week. So that was really cool. Uh, I may show that at the end after a spoiler alert. Um, or I may just save that and take pictures and do an Instagram dump, um, or maybe a photo dump on here when uh, the, all my gifts have been delivered, but it was great to get in a small start and finish and clearly rotate through quite a lot of pieces. But before I get into showing you those, a couple of other quick updates. Uh, I told you last time about planning to start my I forget the rest piece for my anniversary and my anniversary came and went and I didn't start it but not for lack of wanting to uh the package never showed up <laughs> uh it just it ever since like the 7th of November it's been showing as transitioning between locations in the tracking and Nothing's ever happened. And I went to the post office to pick up something else and I asked them if they, you know, could do anything to check on more detail on the status. And they were like, no, we just suggest waiting for it. 
And after two weeks of waiting, I finally gave up and emailed 123Stitch and they were fantastic. They emailed me right back and said, no worries, we'll send you a new package. And just refuse the, the package if you end up getting it, um, the old one, and we'll send a new one right away. So thank you 123Stitch for being awesome, but I did not get to start that for my anniversary, which probably means I won't start it until the new year. But that's okay, because I stitched on lots of other things. <laughs> uh, another thing I've been doing is playing Stitchopoly. And I actually started playing when I recorded my last video, but I forgot to talk about it. And this is in the Facebook group Semi, -St Semi Sane Stitchers. And I haven't really done much with them, a couple of things here and there, but I find that their events are either like really time consuming or really nonchalant. And Magical Stitches has been my priority and remains my priority in terms of Facebook challenges. So I've really just been kind of an observer in Semi Sane. But Stitchopoly seemed really cool. And so I decided to play and it's basically a Monopoly board where you, on every space you land on, you have to stitch a certain number of stitches and they all represent like designers and, and you know, sellers of cross stitch things. And that's been so much fun. I've really just been putting in my stitches for what I'm doing for Magical Stitches and it's counting towards Stitchopoly too. I'm just taking more pictures than usual because things aren't breaking up the same in Magical Stitches and Stitchopoly. Um, and I don't know why it's so much fun because it's, it, Magical Stitches is really driving what I'm stitching. I, I just am having a blast <laughs> doing it. So I'm looking forward to continuing that through the month and Maybe I'll keep my eye out for more events through them because, yeah, I've really had a good time. All right, so we're going to skip starts and finishes because if I show that to you, it'll be at the end of the video. So we're going to move right into whips. And this week, I'm going to hopefully try to insert pictures of what things looked like last time and maybe what things like cover images of what things will look like when they're done, but I haven't totally decided how that's going to go and if I'm going to have time to do it. So please bear with me if I decide not to put any of that in. So my first project is rainbow black work. These may or may not be in the order that I worked on them, but I don't really think you care, right? And here we go. So basically what I worked on was some black border. I finished, uh, nope, I finished this square right here, I think, and then worked on some border. I'm really loving this piece. Peppermint Purple is one of my favorite designers, and I wish that this fit into more Magical Stitches challenges because I would definitely work on it more if it did, which probably just means I should take it out anyway, but Magical Stitches rules my life, you know? Moving on. This project is one that I have talked about. Oh, I didn't show. I didn't show my rainbow black work the bag that it's in. I think I showed it last time, but I love this bag. Made by my friend Jen. Thanks, Jen. Um, so this next project is one that is relatively close to a finish. Uh, at this point, I want to say it's under a thousand stitches to finish, but it's definitely under two thousand stitches to a finish. Uh, this is one that I would really like to finish by the end of the year. I don't know if I can make that happen with all of the gift stitching that I'm doing, but it would be really great if I could. So here we go. This is but first tea, and tea will, the word tea will go underneath the mug. So I worked on the red flower, and I worked on this red flower and the leaf, 
And this is some of the handle. I filled in all of the black in the main part of the mug. So I got a lot done on this. I used it for a bunch of challenges. And honestly, I was really bored of this project. Every time I worked on it, I was just like, well, uh. And lately I've been really enjoying it. Why there are two needles, I don't know. But yeah, really looking forward to getting this project out again. This is a good one too because it travels really well. It's not very big. It goes in my 8x8Q snap. So when I'm traveling a lot for the holidays, I might just see if I can figure out how to work this in. Next up, we have... Oh, I think this one is still on my Q snap. We have Hildy's Brew. Um, this... Oh, the, the last one I don't remember what the designer is, but I always put it in the description below. This one is from Michelle Bendy Stitchy and it is Hildy's Brew. So here's what it looks like now. And basically I put on her shoes and the green on the floor and I started on the border. And I'm not doing the called for color for the border. Um, I started out doing a like burgundy etoile in the border and I really didn't like it because up against the green of the floor, it looked too Christmassy. Even though from afar it is more burgundy than red, but um, I just, I didn't end up liking it. So I pulled it out and now I've got like a much more, I don't know, what do you call that? Like, it's not like fuchsia. Maybe it is fuchsia. I don't know. Like a purpley border. So yeah, this one's also really close to being done. It just needs to finish the border. Um, Michelle doesn't doesn't publish in her charts how many stitches of each color or anything like that. So I don't really know how close I am, but I think I'm really close. This is another one I'd really like to finish just because I'm so close. All right. Moving right along to a fun one. I mean, these are all fun, right? <laughs> we have my Harry Potter covers collage. And here's what it looks like now. I believe uh, all of this, it, this is the R. I believe I did all of this in the last two weeks. And that's just like one color with a little bit of confetti around the edges. And so that went really, really fast. Next, I'm just flying through these. For the most part, I don't have a lot to talk about with them. But hopefully you like seeing them all the same. So next project I worked on is Hogwarts Express. And this is another one that is really close to being done. It's probably not quite as close as um, But First Tea, but nearly. It's probably, I don't know. I think this and T and Hildy are all relatively similar in terms of effort left on them. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say Hildy probably has the least, but, you know, I really do love when designers put stitch totals in for me, and not all of them do. I believe I have stitch totals for, let's see, I have stitch totals for Hogwarts Express and for T, so... I have, on Hogwarts Express, I have uh, a little over 1,200 stitches left. And on T, I have, ah, I only have 850 stitches left on T. So, here's what Hogwarts Express looks like now. I 
I worked a lot on this one this week. Uh, all of the wheels are new. The front of the train is new. Basically, everything underneath the train is new. And I'm really happy with how this is looking. Before, the orange was looking really stark. And now it's really blending into the red and looking really good. So basically, I have to finish the train, which is just the front part and filling in the wheels. And then I have to add the, the words on top. So, yeah, this is another one I'm really enjoying and really excited about how close I am to finishing. This one is also a relatively good travel piece because it fits in my 8x8 and there really aren't that many colors left either. I have this predicament when I travel. The way I store my projects is that I have little floss baggies. Here, I'll show you. So I keep my floss in little baggies like this with the symbol. And so when I'm at home, I don't have the actual bobbins in my project bags because I share my bobbins with all of my pieces except for my Haid. I don't share my Haid bobbins uh, just because that piece is so big and I, I don't know. People scare me about dye lots, even though they're supposed to not be a thing. Um, but when I travel, I have to bring all the bobbins with me. So the, the projects that have only a few colors left in them are fantastic because I don't have to bring as many bobbins. But I don't usually color complete in bigger projects. Smaller projects, it's much easier to color complete. Uh, so it's even easier to travel with those for me. Okay, so this next project is Old Faithful in my adorable bison bag. And this one is kind of silly because I stitched on it like 60 stitches. I thought I had this for uh, a magical stitches task and I got part way in and I was like, I don't remember which task I had this for and I pulled up my spreadsheet and I didn't. So I'm not going to call it a waste because it's progress on a project, but I was a little annoyed by that because I was trying to get finished with my projects for Magical Stitches. But here is the project now. Yep, still more sky. It's going to be sky for a while on this one. But you can see I'm working around the outline of the geyser. So that's cool. In person, I don't really see column lines, but on the camera I do, which makes me nervous. I do feather my stitching, which a lot of people don't do across columns. They just do it on pages. But I do it on columns too. Maybe it's just because this column is stretching down below the others, so your eye is more drawn to it. I don't know. Hopefully it's not a big deal. And I was able to apply this to some extra credit for Magical Stitches, so really no harm done there. Oh no. So this piece I worked on several times in the last two weeks. Um, and I am loving making progress on this piece. It's a really weird combination of confetti and solid stitching, which is kind of a refreshing, like alternating of pace. So here is piano. So 
I worked on this whole column here. So I'm trying to decide with this piece if um, this right here is the end of a page. And I'm trying to decide, and it's like, it's just two pages. It's one that goes all the way down and then one that's over here. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to finish this page or if I want to stretch across and do the whole horizontal. And then if I do the whole horizontal or really either way, like I did um, 40 stitches down, should I do like 30 and 30 or should I just do all 60 down? I don't know. Haven't decided yet. If you have suggestions, let me know. So that's what I'm working on for this week's homework. Uh, with Magical Stitches, we had a, a, uh, a wheel spun for us, and that's the project that got picked. It was for, for Hufflepuffs, it was something you'd like to steal. And for this project, I would like to steal a piano because um, I have a piano that is very near and dear to my heart that I picked out when I was uh, studying piano in school and it currently resides at my parents house because I don't have a place big enough for it and constantly I'm thinking about stealing it back from them and one day when I'll have a house big enough to put it and I'm terrified that they're going to want to downsize before I'm ready to take it from them and that they're not going to have room for it and so yeah. I really want to steal my piano back. <laughs> and my mom makes jokes about how, like, well, it's in my house, so it's mine. I'm like, well, no, it's mine. It was it was a gift from my grandparents to me, and uh, therefore it is mine. <laughs> uh, all right, so next project is Pride and Prejudice. I made decent progress on this piece this week. Still in part one, but here's what it looks like. Oops. I basically only did, ooh, there we go. I basically only did border. It really isn't that much, actually. I really just did like, uh, from this, over in the top border. So yeah, not as much as I've remembered. I think I have this project slated for two extra credits for November, December, one of which will be the last piece in a series. I think I'm going to try and just stretch the border down to the bottom. Uh, I don't know if that will work out. It might end up having to be Emerald City for that one, but we shall see. Okay, next we have my So Much to Love freebie from Galleria. And when you saw this last, it just had uh, a little bit of the top. And now it looks like this. So I'm basically just negative space stitching right now, but you can see the awning and the words that'll all get filled in. Uh, this is one of the other pieces that is relatively close to finishing just because this one is small and very easy to travel with because there's really not that many colors and there's actually quite a few colors but they're all in the part of the pattern that I'm not gonna do so makes it easy all right we are just booking along here This is fun because you're getting to see almost all of my projects. Next we have Emerald City. The Sal by Owl Forest. 
This one is getting a bit unwieldy to show. It's just getting big. Oops. There we go. And what I worked on was the wizard skin and the flying monkey. And I did those for the skeleton prompt from Magical Stitches. We were allowed to work on an animal or a human body, but not their clothes. And that was a good deal of over one stitching on the wizard skin, which I don't really mind because it's not in Krynik. <laughs> So that was pretty fun. And last but not least, goodness gracious, all my needle minders are connecting. Yikes. We have Christmas Carol. And this is my Hade. This will take me many, 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 many years to finish. <laughs> And here's what it looks like. So basically I just worked on that last column. Right here. This column right here. I have to say I'm not really loving stitching with the stitch grid lines. Um... Are you allowed to stitch like over top of them? I've been sort of trying to go underneath, at least on the front side, definitely stitching over them in the back, but is that okay? Or does that warp your stitches? I don't know. Someone help me. But um, these stitches are really freaking tiny. This is 28 count one over one. And this camera is not even going to remotely focus to show you how tiny the stitches are. But I'm enjoying it, but it's definitely a challenge. And I can't work on it for a ridiculously long time. Just because I get burnt out pretty quickly on this. I think probably next time I do a hate, I'll do 25 count. I really like the coverage of the 28 count, but it's just... It's real small. Um, I was going to say something, but I forgot. I'm also, like, not mad to be doing background stitching on the head. I, I specifically picked one that didn't have, like, a lot of bland background stitching. Um but I'm really not bothered by the background. And one of the other Hades, actually two of, the only two other Hades that I have, have a significant amount of background. So I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> so real quick before we go into haul, that was all of my whips, by the way. Uh, I do want to show one more piece because I gotta rotate my basket of projects here. Um, I keep track of the pieces that are getting stale and for, for months it was Hogwarts Express that was getting stale. But now that I have worked on that, uh, that is no longer a stale project. And so now I have a new stale project and this is one that I may have shown back like in my first episode, but I may not have shown it ever at all. Um, so I'm going to show it now because if I show it, maybe it'll get me excited about it and want to work on it again. Uh, the last time I worked on this was the end of August. But I mean, that's pretty good, right? If my most stale piece I last worked on in August, that's not that bad, right? So this is my watercolor barn owl. And you can see it's sort of like facing to the side. 
Um, so this is like, oops, this is like one eye bit and then this is another eye bit. Um, I don't love this piece. It's a lot of confetti. I'm worried about it kind of looking weird when it's done. It's really not my favorite to work on. But I'm going to stick with it. And now that it's most stale, hopefully that'll guilt me into working on it. <laughs> All right, let's do some haul. I actually did a considerable amount of haul this week. Shocking, I know, right? And as you could see, project bags. Project bags came in and I am psyched about both of these. Uh, these are both from So Much To Love. First we have Quidditch. I love this. And I also have this one right here. I'm I'm absolutely in love with this bag. This is the coolest fabric I've ever seen. So so as not to confuse anyone because I talked about Christmas stuff in my last couple of episodes. Um, I celebrate both Christmas and Hanukkah in my family. My dad's family is Jewish and my mom's family is Christian. So I had a really cool upbringing where I got to celebrate both Christmas and Hanukkah and they are both important, you know, traditions in my family. So uh, I get, I like to have some Hanukkah in my life. And when I saw this fabric, this is like, this is not like your traditional, you know, blue and white Hanukkah. They're trees. I'm just so obsessed. It's so pretty. So I'm on the hunt for Hanukkah things to stitch. Um, I just saw one, took a screenshot. Let me see if I can find it. It was posted to Instagram just the other day, uh, yesterday, today is Tuesday, the 19th. So it was posted on the 18th and it is works by ABC. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see in my phone. Not very well, but that's what they look like. And they look really cool. And I think the, the flames of the candles are beaded. Ooh, the candles are specialty stitches. Okay, I really want to do this piece. Um, I also have my eye on, I think it's Ink Circles, has a really cool Hanukkah chart that's relatively large and time consuming. Um, but I have my eye on that one too. So I also got in a uh, picture of this plus shipment. They were having a sale a couple months ago of uh, Ada that was like, I don't know, are these eighths? I think these are eighths. Um, and so I just picked up a few. This is 18 count jade. That is not showing up even remotely close to the right color. It's much greener than this. Also 18 count Highland. This is like a greenish yellow. Let me pull it out because the variegation of this one's really cool. Sorry, crinkle, crinkle. Yeah, it that doesn't even remotely look right. It's basically like yellow and blue and green. And jade is like more of a sea foam color. And I think Highland is the most variegated. The rest are pretty modeled, but like, so this one is called Whimsy. This is 18 count whimsy. This is a little bit redder than it's showing, but otherwise that's pretty close. 
And so, like, that's got some good modeling, but it's only really got, like, the two-tone modeling, whereas this one has, like, three or four different colors in it. And last but not least, we have 16 Count J. That one's actually showing up pretty, pretty close. It's like a deep periwinkle. So I got those. I don't have any plans for what to put on them, but it's nice to just have around some options for smalls. Um, I think that's most likely what I'm gonna want to stitch on just something that I have in my stash versus the called for. So I really like having small pieces of interesting colors around. So I also did some haul on Etsy from Brooks Books. Brooks Books is an Etsy seller who has been on hiatus for quite a while and she is back. And so she did a sale and I snatched up a bunch of things that had been on my wish list and I will insert pictures of them here. So I'm really excited about the Wizard of Oz ones. Uh, I've had those on my list for quite some time and uh, I didn't get every Wizard of Oz pattern that she has, um, but she, I haven't ruled out getting those. They're just ones that I'm not as sure that, that I'm gonna get to. Um, I'm terrified. I'm completely terrified of the Wizard of Oz Santa, like, Oh my god but it's so beautiful and when i posted in a panic into the hufflepuff chat garrett was like no the instructions are really clear you should totally get it so i did i'm sure we'll sit in my stash for quite a long time as i get up the courage to do it but if anybody else has it and wants to like sell it i think that would be really fun because i'm just I just don't want to do it by myself. <laughs> so. And then, well, so the other two that I got that were not Wizard of Oz, um, the Santa just looks really cool and I like him. And I have a thing for pine cones. So looking forward to those. And the pine cone, I don't think has anything super specialty crazy about it. So I'm excited that... I'll have a easy or small. I don't think any of the other Wizard of Oz ones do either. Just the Santa. So we're gonna move on to pin haul here. And I have a lot, so I'm trying to like organize it here on my lap. <laughs> um, and I would have a lot anyway. And then I also got in a Kickstarter that I backed. So, and also something that I pre-ordered. So it just sort of all came at once. So let's start with this one. This is from Blackfish Bokery. And this is a Polyjuice Potion. And with these pins, it's always hard to tell, but in the cauldron there is written the ingredients for Polyjuice Potion. Um, it says lacewing flies, flexweed, leeches, boom slang skin, bicorn horn, and knockgrass. So that's super cute. Then I got a couple of fun bookish pins from Brio and Brandish. I got all books count. I got into an internet argument with someone a few months ago about audiobooks counting as reading. And sorry, not sorry, audiobooks count as reading. 
so just had to grab that one and then also from brio and brandish this one says sleep is good books are better And the thing I love about this is I was not a particular troublemaker growing up. The most trouble I ever got into was reading after my bedtime. So <laughs> that one cracked me up. Then here uh, we have from SJ Wonderlands, we have from the Hogwarts library, it says, oh, honestly, don't you two read? That one's super cute. It says Hogwarts Library on the top. There you go. I got that to focus really well. Let me see if I can show this one again. Well, it almost did it there. So close. Mm, nope, not going to do it. That Polyjuice one is from Blackfish Bookery on Etsy if you want to look it up. I will link it below as well. All right, then from a shop that I really like but has some really pricey pins just because of the detail in them. Uh, from Wither Wings, ooh, my computer went to sleep, don't do that. Uh, Wither Wings Wizarding Wares. That's the shop name. And here we have Fluffy, going to sleep with the harp over the trap door. And it's super cute. Focus. It's probably the best we're going to do with the glare. Um, I actually found this pin because of a different pin they just came out with. It's like a pastel Hogwarts and... It, I believe it says, like, just because it's happening inside your head, why does it mean it, I forget that quote exactly, why does that mean that it shouldn't be real? And the quote is wrong on the pin. Um, of course it's happening inside your head, Harry, but why does that mean that it should not be real? Or something. Um... And, yeah, the quote is slightly wrong. And I just, I can't, I can't buy a pen that has an incorrect quote on it. Um, she left out Harry. So instead of saying, uh, of course it's happening inside your head, Harry, but why does that mean it shouldn't be real? That's fine, leaving out Harry. But I think she said it would not be real instead of should not be real or something. I don't remember exactly, but that made me really bummed out. And so I didn't end up getting it, which is just as well because it was like, it was like a hundred dollar pin, which I wouldn't usually do except this pin was really beautiful. So I was actually kind of glad that I was saved. <laughs> so I'm going to open one of these pins just because it's interactive and needs to be opened. So these next, sorry, crinkle, crinkle. Oh my God, I can't even get it out. Come out. So these pins are from a shop called Bunsen Bean. And this is what it looks like. So they have a line of pins that are like the interior of Hogwarts. So I've begun collecting them. These again are extremely expensive, in my opinion, worth it because this pin opens and is the Gryffindor common room. Oh, I desperately want this to focus for you. It's not going to. There's so much detail in this pin that you're missing because my camera won't focus. I can't wait to get. Oh, there we go. I'm working on a new setup, but it's going to take me some time. 
So yeah, I'm obsessed with these. They're so detailed, in my opinion, so worth the price. They also fit together, so you can see there's like notches in them. They fit together like puzzle pieces. So I, ha I believe I have all the ones that she's come out with so far, and I'm obsessed. I also, when I pre-ordered that, um, I also picked this up as well to qualify for the shipping. And it is lemon drops. It says honey dukes and the lemons are or the lemon drops are glittery. Which I just think is adorable. And then this was a little freebie that came with it as well for subscribing to their newsletter. That's a little back to the future fun there. Another cool thing that they do in that shop is they have these corkies and can you see? So they're basically magnets with cork in them so that you can attach your pins to a magnetic surface but you push the pin into the cork part. Um, so it's like almost a needle minder which is cool. Um, I probably won't use them but I think it's a great idea. All right, so now we have from a, a shop that I have shown before and absolutely love, Swish and Flick. These are the suits of armor that protect Hogwarts. Do your duty to our school. And it came in two colors, but I like the purple one, so. Love that. And then last but not least, I supported Swish and Flick's Kickstarter for Weasley's Wizard Wheezes pins. And I got four of them. I got a thanked Frisbee. I wanted to get them all, but I couldn't afford it. Thanked Frisbee. Extendable ears. Fireworks. And we have a bunny and a hat. And as you can see, the bunny moves. So that's super cute. And with that Kickstarter, I got a couple of stickers as well for free. I have this way. Their briefcase. And a pygmy puff. So, love those. Tons of pins this week. I would like to say that I'm slowing down on the pins, but I know that that would be a lie. I absolutely have to get on my Harry Potter pin display because they're just sort of like sitting in a box right now, and that's really sad. And these are so stunning. They should absolutely be displayed and really expensive. So, yes, please, let's get them displayed. Um, but I have a, I think I talked about this last time, I have a tapestry wall hanging for them and they're not even remotely all going to fit. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do and how I'm going to organize them. But hopefully in the next, in the next month or two, that'll happen. All right, let's talk about plans. So I'm going to keep working on the piano, as I said, because that's what I'm working on for homework this week. But I am going to finish that before the end of the week, I'm sure. So what will I work on next? Um, I'm, I have the barn owl piece, the watercolor one, um, slated for an ultimate and so for magical stitches. So I may work on that if I have time. I also would like to start another gift start because I'm sort of on a roll with that after having a start and a finish this week. So I'd like to maintain that pace if I could. Um, and also it feels really good to finish. So finishing any of the things that I mentioned being close to a finish would be fantastic. I don't know if I have any of those slated for extra credits. I know I have at least Hogwarts Express slated for an ultimate. So maybe that'll get some love this week too. So it's a little up in the air, but um, I think probably gift stitching will be top priority right now and 
that's a good segue into I am going to show what I started and finished this week, but disclaimer, if you know me in real life, if we're friends in any way, turn back now. I'm not going to talk about anything else for the rest of the video, so don't look. Just go to the end. Be done. Goodbye. And here it is. This is a super quick stitch. Really, really cute. So yeah. Uh, that'll probably get finished in a little hoop because I'm really bad at doing anything else. <laughs> but maybe I'll do like a wrapped hoop or something cute like that. So I think that's all I've got. How'd I do on time? Under an hour. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully with all the pictures added, it won't go over an hour, but we'll see. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you all get some time for stitching in this week because man, over the last couple of weeks, it's very clear from the number of projects I've worked on that I have really needed my stitching. So I hope that you're able to get in some stitching time for yourself as well. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I will see you next time. Bye.